the coronation. He had dreamed of this day since he was a boy. He had always felt that he was destined for greatness, that he had a special mission to fulfill. He had risen from obscurity to glory, from a poor Corsican soldier to the master of France and Europe. He had conquered lands and peoples, he had reformed laws and institutions, he had created an empire that rivaled the ancient Romans. He had defied the old order, the kings and the nobles, the priests and the pope. He had made himself the supreme ruler, the emperor of the French. He had prepared everything for his coronation, the most splendid and magnificent ceremony that the world had ever seen. He had chosen the Notre Dame Cathedral as the venue, the symbol of the French nation and the Christian faith. He had invited all the dignitaries and the elites, the generals and the ministers, the ambassadors and the princes. He had ordered the finest clothes and jewels, the most exquisite decorations and music, the most lavish feasts and gifts. He had spared no expense, no effort, no detail. He had arrived at the cathedral, dressed in a white robe with gold trimmings and a red sash. He had held a scepter and a sword, the emblems of his power and authority. He had walked through the crowd of admirers and flatterers, who had cheered and applauded him. He had ascended the steps of the altar, where the Pope had awaited him. He had knelt before the pontiff, who had blessed him and handed him the crown. He had taken the crown, and had done something unexpected. He had not let the Pope place it on his head, as the tradition dictated. He had placed it on his own head, as a sign of his independence and sovereignty. He had then crowned his wife, Josephine, as his empress. He had stood up, and had faced the audience. He had raised his hand, and had sworn an oath to the French people. He had said, I swear to maintain the integrity of the territory of the Republic, to respect and enforce the concordat and the freedom of religion, the equality of rights, the political and civil liberty, the irrevocability of the sale of national lands, not to leave I any tax except in virtue of the law, to maintain the institution of the Legion of Honor, to govern in the sole interest, happiness, and glory of the French people. He had finished his speech, and had waited for the response. He had expected a thunderous applause, a unanimous acclaim, a joyful celebration. He had hoped to see the love and loyalty of his subjects, the admiration and respect of his peers, the awe and fear of his enemies. But he had seen something else. He had seen the doubt and the resentment, the envy and the hatred, the discontent and the rebellion. He had seen the faces of those who had opposed him, who had plotted against him, who had betrayed him. He had seen the faces of those who had suffered under him, who had lost their freedom and their rights, who had died in his wars. He had seen the faces of those who had followed him, who had served him faithfully, who had sacrificed everything for him. He had realized that he had not created an empire, but a prison. He had realized that he had not gained glory, but infamy. He had realized that he had not achieved greatness, but isolation. He had realized that he had crowned himself, but he had doomed himself.